tonight. Do we still need cash? I think cash is a completely outdated technology. It's like paying someone with stones and carrying them in your pocket. What might the future look like without it? I open all the doors here with my hand. I also use it for buying the afternoon snacks in the vending machines. What does going digital actually mean? I've just used my credit card where I just touched it and it took it through. For sake of three pound, I used my card. Felt weird. And would going cashless really benefit us all? My fear is if we sleepwalk into a cashless society, that really is going to leave millions of people behind. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. Last year, a milestone was reached in the UK. Three quarters of our retail sales were made via cards or digital payments. Contactless technology has been a game changer and now some businesses in this country have decided to go completely cashless. But not everyone sees the move away from real money as positive as reporter Adnan Sawa has been finding out. It's perhaps not surprising that the use of cash in the UK is in decline compared to the ease and convenience of digital payment methods. And it's a trend that is rapidly gathering pace. If we go back 10 years, six out of every transactions in Britain were in cash. Last year it was less than three out of 10. And most forecasters now think within 10 years we'll only have one out of every 10 transactions in Britain will be in cash. Contactless went from something that people were a bit suspicious about to something where adoption became very widespread. Paying £2 for your bus fare or your tube fare is a hassle. Waving your card at a reader and forgetting about it is really, really easy. The pace of change into these new forms of payment is truly staggering. But when it comes to embracing these new technologies, are we still pretty divided between those who are happy to pay with a quick tap of one of these or even one of these, and those who prefer their transactions a bit more old school? Do you use card or cash? Both. Me, I use cash. The wife, she use card. I like to have a little bit of cash, but I mainly use my card. £50, I'd use a card, but for £10 or £15, I use cash. Do you not use a card? Don't like them. Would you use a card? Could you go away tapping away on a card? No, I know how much I've got with me when I've got cash in my pocket. If you've got nothing in your purse, you've got nothing, have you? That's true. That is a license to spend what you've not got. Lots of people are paying on their phones now. I pay on my phone all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Big numbers. <laughs> Whatever your feelings about it, these changes are expanding into areas you might not expect. Made me feel so alive. Helly and Andy have been busking around the northwest for the last five years. You can show them your appreciation in the time honoured fashion if you wish, but if you don't have any cash on you, don't worry. They've gone contactless. There's been a significant decrease in cash over the last 12 months. Do you get Less money now? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's where we've had to embrace technology. I think it's kind of a necessity now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. It's a case of moving forward with it and saying, OK, people aren't carrying the cash. Let's get a card machine. What kind of reactions do you get from people when they see that? Teenagers laugh they, and they dare each other to come and do it. I think there is a trust issue with um, maybe the older generation that have grown up with just cash. I don't know if it's because they don't trust the machine or they might be thinking, oh, it's going to keep my card details, but it's just as safe as using the one in any standard shop. But definitely younger people don't think twice about it. You know, that's what we found anyway. I think it's very cool. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to donate then? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I will donate. Perfect. And there's something else you might have noticed. Some businesses up and down the country have simply decided to stop taking cash. Linda runs a wine shop and bar in Stockport, and she decided it should go completely cashless just over a year ago. Some people think we're doing it to try and be kind of cool and trendy and uh, modern. But in fact, her motivation wasn't a desire to be cutting edge. It was safety. 
We went cashless because of two robberies that happened on the street. Both the jewellers and another bar and restaurant were done over. As soon as that happened, we decided to remove all the cash from the site, which was the obvious thing for us to do. And along with the security benefits, Linda has also found several other advantages. We don't have to walk to the bank with the cash, which again is another security issue. We don't have to count cash every day because you get a till read and you get a card read and they match and that's that. So it makes things a lot simpler um, and gives staff kind of less responsibility, which is nice for them. There are charges involved in taking card payments, but there are also charges involved in putting money in the bank. So for us, it pretty much evens out. And Linda's customers have also largely welcomed the change. I don't really carry cash, so for me it works absolutely fine and makes no difference. I've always used the cashless here anyway that they had before, so it works really well for me. I can understand how it's different for everyone, but I think we're kind of moving towards more of an electronic age now. Everyone's using their phones. A lot of people here pay on their watches. It has to be a more secure way of doing things, and I think that anything that makes businesses and customers feel safer is a positive step. But not everyone is on board with this trend. The phrase cash is king could have been invented for Karen and Steve. Virtually everything they buy, they use cash. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Yeah, see you again. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. So tell me, how much do you use cash? How much do you rely on it? Yeah, we don't use cards very often. No. We prefer cash. I think it's the way we're brought up. Old school. You got paid in cash. It's there. You can see it. You can feel it. You can smell it. So whatever you had, you knew how much you had to spend and you saved up for other things. Whereas on a card, you know, you could be tempted to overspend. How do you think we're moving as a, as a society? I must admit, it does scare me. You see kids, they've used the phones, and I'm thinking, what's he doing? He's paying with his phone, I don't understand it. There's certain supermarkets, when I've been running low on fuel, I've pulled on, and I've pulled up, there's no, there's no kiosk. They're gone, you have to pay by car, so I'll drive off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, onto the next one. Yeah. yeah. And if he's parking, if it's a parking space, and uh, it's card only, he won't do no. it. But with card only becoming more commonplace and technology being used more frequently, where does that leave Karen and Steve? Do you feel like you're being left behind? If I'm left behind, some of it's my own doing, I think, because I don't embrace it as much as the youngsters do. Things online are cheaper. They're always encouraging you to, to do things online because you save money. I think most of it's the security aspect that concerns me. Yeah, I've, you hear on the news so many card fraud and things like that. Great, thank you. Karen and Steve are about to take their trust issues to a whole new level, not only trusting the systems, but also their own spending habits, because we have a little challenge for them. For the next week, they are going to live without their beloved cash. How do you feel about that? Nervous. <laughs> I've got this box here. Right. So we're going to put your cash in this box, and then I'm going to... Lock it up. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. So we're going to put this up here right, yeah, okay. for a week. Yeah. And we'll catch up with Karen and Steve a little later in the programme to see how they're getting on. A special poll for tonight has found that half of those questioned always carried cash on them, with more than a quarter still using it every day. Nearly three quarters considered cash to be essential, but just under a third had encountered cash-free businesses in the UK. Over half of people didn't think the UK should become a cashless society. That might be the feeling in this country, but elsewhere they are further down the cashless road. This is Josephine, selecting a drink from a vending machine in her office in Stockholm, Sweden but watch how she pays for it. Three years ago, Josephine had a microchip embedded under a skin that acts like a fob and can make digital payments. I open all the doors here with my hand. I also use it for, for buying the afternoon snacks in the vending machine. I could also use it for riding trains here in Sweden and also go to the local gym. A lot of people raises their eyebrow and be like, wow, that's something different. But I would say that the comments nowadays are very positive and quite, where can I get one? And since having it implanted, Josephine has never looked back. I never have cash. I can't remember the last time I had cash. I never use it. I think that's quite exciting how society can change like that. You can't use cash on public transport any longer in Sweden or in many shops. And now only 6% of all transactions are in cash. 
Research has suggested the country could be the first in the world to go fully cashless as early as 2023. Josephine's colleague Hannes is one of the people who introduced microchip technology to his fellow Swedes. Chip implants is not a new technology. We have applied them to livestock and pets for decades. And uh, technologically, the implants that we use in humans are not that different from the ones used in animals. However, the interesting part is that this implant is compatible with all these different platforms, such as smartphones, payment terminals, etc. And it isn't just a couple of people using this. It's estimated more than 4,000 Swedes have chosen to be chipped and others across the globe are joining them. But the emerging technology has raised questions about security. I think this is really interesting, and I can see for some people, for example, people with a disability, this could be really helpful technology. But it also is a whole brave new world. And for a lot of us, I think we're asking the questions over what data is being stored, where is it being kept, how is it being kept secure? I am not at all concerned about the privacy dimensions of, of implants, simply because they don't actually collect a lot of data. Of course, we can foresee a future where, for example, a chip implant would be the source of some very private health information. Then we need to build and safeguard the use of this data, how it's stored, how it's accessed by different actors in a safe way. For Hannes, waving goodbye to coins and notes is a no-brainer. I think cash is a completely outdated technology. It's like paying someone with stones and carrying them in your pockets. They're heavy, they're clumsy, you lose them, you can't keep track of them. It's easy to steal. I, I can't understand why people still use cash in many places. But there's been a backlash at the pace of change in Sweden especially amongst the older generation, some of whom just don't want to embrace a world of swiping and PIN numbers. Christina Talberg is the president of the Swedish National Pensioners Organization. It's difficult to remember these codes. You can't have them written down in your wallet or in your handbag. That is forbidden. And with higher age, it's more easy to forget. And then many are feeling very unsure. I think as long as our parliament have a decision that is legal payment to use cash and notes, then it must be also possible to do that in all Sweden. And despite those prophecies about the imminent demise of real money, it seems the Swedish National Bank has come to the same conclusion. We will always offer fiscal banknotes. Um, so that's not going to be a question. We need to have preparedness for crisis, so we need to have physical cash. And also because some people still may want to use cash. Perhaps inevitably, those people who are most eager to embrace technology are not the most vulnerable. They're not the people in rural communities. They're not the old, they're not the poor. And we need to make sure that in our society, as digital does progress and we do become more innovative, we bring people with us and we don't leave millions behind. Two people who feel they've been slightly left behind are cash-only enthusiasts Karen and Steve. It's time to check in with them to see how they're finding their week confined to the card. I've just used my credit card for the first time where I just touched it and it took it through. For sake of three pound I used my card, felt weird. Our takeaway doesn't take cards in the shop, so they said I've had to order online. It took me ages to order online, and I've also had to open a PayPal account, so I'm not happy. Good evening. We're at a municipal building learning to dance. Uh, they've got a bar, which is good. It says alcohol, soft, soft drinks. drinks and snacks, but they only take cash. So we're dancing for three hours and not a single drink. So I want my cash back, please. Is that pretty much what we want up to now? Yeah. And getting used to cards wasn't the only challenge for Karen and Steve this week. Uh, quick and convenient <coughs> shopping. They also tackled their very first online shopping order. It's stressing me out already, this. I could... No, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> there oh. you go. Right, you Book gone. a slot. Shall we ask for...? Well, we need to be in, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need any fresh food? Yeah, we need some bananas. Let's press on that and see what happens. So we need baked potatoes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. put four. No, four. I'm not. 
Oh, that's you 14. 14. <laughs> you want 14. Where's the Coronas that you like? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, can you do it. I can't, no. This is doing me heading now. It's hard work. Right, continue to payment. Right, OK. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Your order has been placed. placed. I think that's it. So you've got to sit in now between... Six o'clock and seven o'clock. <laughs> I wasn't planning on going out anyway. I'll be oh, sat there. I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. No, it's not for me. If you are a fan of using cash, you may be finding it harder than ever to make a withdrawal. In the UK, we've had quite a comprehensive cash infrastructure until now. So what we've started to see over the last couple of years are areas, particularly rural areas, emerge where they may have seen their bank branch close a few years ago. They've now seen their ATM close or go to charge per use. And they're starting to have a problem accessing cash. I'm in Harlech in Wales. They don't have a bank. They don't have a post office and they've just lost their free-to-use cash machines. So how has this impacted on the people who live around here? In the local community centre, it certainly seems to be the hot topic of the day. How important is using cash to you? Extremely important. In our area, we have shops that only take cash. We have businesses that only take cash. The bad part of it is, to get cash, you have to pay. There are only two cash points in the village, but both charge for withdrawals. If somebody just needs a tenner to pay for school dinners or something like that, they're paying 175 straight away to get it. It's about six miles to Penry. There is a, a free machine there, but I don't have a car, and the buses are few and far between here. So you end up spending half a day just to get some cash out. I think it's wrong that you should be paying to get your own money out of a machine. If you need to get to a bigger town to get cash out, well, you'll probably do your shopping in that town. And that's going to really impact rural communities. And we're starting to see individuals struggle to get cash, to pay bills. And my fear is, if we sleepwalk into a cashless society, that really is going to leave millions of people behind. For some, using real money is not just preferential, it can be essential. This charity in Birmingham supports people who need help to get on top of their finances, providing debt advice and help with money management skills. When's the next payment that is due that all this has got to get sorted out? It's in about the next 28 days, give or take. Right, OK. So you've got a little bit of slack. Yes. And the people at today's session say they wouldn't want to live cash-free. It is reassuring to know that you've got a tenner or a fiver in your pocket. Personally, I tend to sort of set aside, like, this is the cash I'm going to use for the month and the rest just simply does not come out of the bank, it stays there. We need money, we need that tangible cash, especially for kids to show them the value of money. I think that when things are just on the computer as a number, how do you teach kids the value of that? Everybody needs to stick to a budget, and yeah, I, I think cash helps you to see when it's gone, it's gone. For some people, there is a very practical choice. Do I heat my home for me and my kids, or do I put food on the table? And when that's the stark reality that is consuming your thoughts and your cares for the week, you really don't want any layer in between your ability to see what you've got. When people don't have physical cash, to see it disappear out of their hands, if that's replaced by just swiping a card, we find that people lose the sense of what they have going down as they spend it, and that's a really dangerous thing. I think for a lot of people, we're not worried about moving into a cashless society. In fact, half of the population our research said would find it fine. That's a lot of us who are in work, who work in the cities, who are policy makers, who are people running companies. And the real risk is we'll make decisions based on our own experience. The problem is around one in five people in Britain, particularly the older, the poorer, those living in more vulnerable circumstances, those in rural communities, need cash. Our role as the banking and finance industry is to come together and figure out a way of ensuring that people are able to pay in the way that they want to pay for the foreseeable future. And in particular, that means protecting the role of cash. We will be launching shortly the Community Cash Initiative. And what we're inviting local communities to do is to come forward and apply for grants to explore different options that might be suitable within their community. 
I've come back to visit Karen and Steve to find out how they've got on with their week's challenge and to see if they've decided to ditch the cash for the card. <laughs> come on through. How's the week with no cash been? Yeah, you're OK. A uh, couple of things were done, a bit daunting. I've never, ever been to a machine to put fuel in the car. Uh, did that for the first time. Have you found you've spent more not using cash? Yes, because some of the shops I went in, because they were only small shops, you had to spend a certain amount, either £5 or £10. That was the minimum spend. How did you feel, you know, when you're doing your online shopping, how did you feel putting your car details onto the internet? Not good, no. Why? That's my personal information. And once it's on there, I don't know where it's gone, who's got it. I'm always wary, but you hear so many stories about people um, having money taken out of their account and, and stuff like that. It's all digital. It's, yeah. it's not something I fully understand. I think that if I did it more often, I'd feel more confident. At the minute, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. It's taken me twice as long. I'm getting stressed, you're getting stressed. We want to do it for another week. How do you feel about that? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Jog sorry, off. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Time to put them out of their misery. Oh, How does that feel? Brilliant. Touchy feeling. Wow. I, I want the coins. I think it was more coins I missed. <laughs> It's no, been an experience no, no. and it's been a laugh, yeah. but no. I'll probably carry the card more with me. Yeah. I will use it in certain instances, but I feel more comfortable having cash in my pocket. Karen and Steve definitely gave their challenge a decent attempt, but a lack of confidence with technology and their fear of being scammed online means only one thing. They want their cash back. And digital banking certainly doesn't seem infallible. In 2018, a system failure left some Visa customers across the UK unable to use chip and pin. And last year, hackers accessed the records of millions of Capital One customers in the US and Canada. One of the key things we need to do is make sure that the organisations that are responsible for this, you know, cashless systems, that they are putting security at the heart of what they do. At the same time, we need to understand as consumers what we can do to protect ourselves. So, for example, if we're using our phone to make payments, making sure we've set up things like find my phone and remotely wipe my phone, making sure we have good passwords on the phone, so if it's lost or stolen, we can assure ourselves we've done everything we can to protect our financial data. But even with its challenges, is this brave new world going to make cash extinct? From what the voices are suggesting across consumers, government, regulators and the banks, I think cash is here and is here to stay. 11,500 post offices up and down the country, including in rural areas and urban deprived areas, uh, offer basic banking services and both Visa and MasterCard are evolving cashback schemes which might enable you to take out cash from a retailer without necessarily making a purchase. So there's a lot of innovation going on. So whilst there is simply no stopping the growth of the digital payment systems, perhaps cash lovers need not worry they've seen the last of it after all, for now at least. And that's it for tonight's programme, but if you want to continue the conversation, please join in using the hashtag ITVTonight on Twitter, as well as visiting our Facebook and Instagram pages and our website, of course, itv.com slash tonight. In the meantime, good evening and thanks for watching.